Uh, the CIA working together with the Taliban? Impossible? Not according to my next guest. RT contributor Wayne Madsen says that's exactly how the U.S. got to the Afghan Taliban's number two commander. You may recall last month the CIA and Pakistan's ISI reported he was captured. Wayne, your latest report, you say the CIA is actually working with the top Afghan Taliban guy. Explain how that's possible and what's going on here. Well, it doesn't come as any shock or shouldn't because the CIA was originally involved with many of these Mujahideen during the war against the Soviet occupation. Uh, many of these individuals later became leaders of the Taliban, including uh, uh, Mullah Muhammad Omar, the number one person in charge of the uh, Taliban. But uh, when, they, uh, when the ISI and CIA jointly captured in Karachi, the number two man in charge of the Afghan Taliban, Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar, apparently it was done with a tip-off from Mullah Omar himself to his interlocutors at the CIA and the ISI. Reason being, uh, Mullah Baradar was uh, actually becoming much more popular than Mullah Omar. And of course, in, in, in this whole quagmire we're playing with in Afghanistan, this is all about tribal affinities and it's about personalities and of course the CIA seems to be in there playing this game. President Ahmadinejad of Iran just said in Kabul the other day that the U.S. is playing a double game in Afghanistan. We supported the Taliban, now that we're fighting the Taliban. Now it seems maybe he didn't go far enough. Maybe we're playing a triple game or a quadruple game in Afghanistan rather than a double game. If that's the case, it seems like it would be hard to keep straight. But I want to know why, if that was the case and this top guy felt his number two guy was getting too popular, why go to the CIA and put himself and potentially more members of the Taliban in danger? Why wouldn't he find an easier way to get rid of them? Well, it seems quite clear that there's still a back channel uh, between the Taliban and the CIA. Remember, these were people originally trained by the CIA. And uh, it, 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 to keep the U.S. in Afghanistan, uh, you play all sides against uh, the middle. In this case, it's Karzai, who also has his connections with the Taliban. We do know that uh, Mullah Baradar uh, had, connection, had some uh, linkages with uh, Hamid Karzai's half-brother in southern Afghanistan, and also Saudi interlocutors. So this is at one big, huge quagmire. This is almost the classic definition of a quagmire. And uh, I think what we're seeing is uh, the CIA up to its old tricks. It goes back many years ago. We saw it, of course, happen in Iraq, but we saw it happen in Southeast Asia during the Indochina conflict. But is this good news for the U.S. that the CIA has the in with the number one Afghan Taliban guy if we're fighting this war in Afghanistan? I mean, it seems like that could be good news. Well, it could be good news, except uh, why are we still in there fighting? We're supposed to be fighting against the Taliban. And of course, there was an outreach by President Karzai. Uh, he, he offered amnesty if these people would come in and uh, join his government. Now, Mullah Baradar was actually on his way to a meeting with European and Japanese envoys to accept that offer when he was nabbed by uh, the CIA and uh, ISI. It's interesting to note, the ISI still has Baradar. The CIA wants him turned over to their custody. But then that gets into this whole Pakistani uh, operation, which is a, 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 it's similar to Afghanistan, but again, we have rivalries between the president and other members of the uh, Pakistani government and other players like Jundala, which uh, the leader of that group was just captured. One big, I'm not sure the U.S. and the CIA has the adult supervision and the area expertise required to know what they're getting involved with in this uh, theater of operations. So is the CIA quickly a pawn for this Taliban leader's plan then? I, I, I believe that uh, uh, Baradar probably was acting in good faith, but he ran across a, a, a conflict with the number one guy in charge of the Taliban, Mullah Omar. I, I would point out in November 2001, Mullah Omar was permitted by the U.S military to escape from Kandahar. We had him, but uh, they let him escape with some honor. So we've got a long history of this uh, sort of uh, liaison between the U.S. and the Taliban. All right. Quite a long history and quite a quagmire. Thanks for helping us sift through it, Wayne.